Welcome to the November edition of Cornerstone Connect. We are giving you a sneak peek into our shows, specials, and guests this month on Cornerstone Network. Pastor Gary joins Tom Hollis as they discuss the benefits of a grateful heart, and we will hear a testimony of a life change through Cornerstone Network and how your partnership made that happen. And Dashing Dish host Katie Farrell joins us to talk about the all new season premiering the month of November. All that and more coming up next. I'm Amanda Brocker and I have a question for you. Have you received your Hope Today newsletter today? If not, please give us a call at 888-665-4483. We absolutely love to connect with you and we try to bring that very newsletter to life with our Cornerstone Connect program. But I just wanna thank you to those who have wrote in. We absolutely love getting mail snail mail. We love those emails too. So we'll take it. Whatever you can do, we just want to hear from you. If you have a testimony of how God has used Cornerstone for your life, we would love to hear your story. You know, there's something about the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony that causes people to overcome. It's his word. Praise God. And we want to see people overcome. Well, this letter comes from Sandra. And she said, thank you for all you do. You're in my thoughts and prayers. Sandra, thank you so much for just letting us know that you appreciate what we do and that you're grateful. We're grateful for you. And this is from Lorraine. She just said, thank you for helping so many people. And she's asking for prayers for our homeland and safety here in America. So we agree, Lorraine, that the Lord would keep watch over all of us. And this is from Peggy. She said, you are my home station. I am learning so much from your programming. God bless you and may God's light keep shining in our area. Peggy, those words mean so much to all of us that we would continue to be that beacon of hope here in the Pittsburgh area and abroad. And we're so thankful that by your helping us, we're there for the other people to tune in. And this comes from Maria. She said, thank you for your faith supporting life sustaining programs, reminding us of who God is and his incredible love for us. Well, I couldn't agree more, Maria. I feel that same way about our network and what a hefty task this is, but with the spirit of God leading the way, we're gonna continue. And with all the support from you lovely people, we're gonna get that message out. This is from Marin and she said, may God continue to bless you in getting the gospel out to the world and that is our mission here. I, I just always hear Norma's voice saying, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And that's what we're about here at Cornerstone. And this is from Virginia. She is a longtime friend and really partner of the ministry. And she just wrote in to let us know that the programming is greater every day. Thank God for his plan. You are all so precious and talented, happy and inspiring. And she just blesses all here at Cornerstone Television. So Virginia, thank you so much for just letting us know that you're here. And thank you to the many of you that support our network. And I'm so excited for all that God has in this program. So stay tuned. Did you know that you can take CTVN with you wherever you go? Just subscribe to Cornerstone Network on YouTube. That's all you have to do to enjoy hundreds of great videos from all your favorite Cornerstone shows, all on the go. Real life interviews, the best of the best of origins, and music from the best Christian artists, all with one click. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell today and get ready for a life-changing message for wherever life takes you. You've loved watching Dashing Dish with Katie Farrell and season four launches this month. 
As a special gift to you when you give to Cornerstone Television Network, we've created a dashing dish cookbook with all the new season's healthy, mouth-watering recipes. From chopped harvest salad to white chicken enchiladas and even chocolate and zucchini cake, there are so many delectable dishes to try. Our dashing dish sampler covers cooking for beginners, busy weekday eats, low carb favorites, picky eaters satisfied, craving busters, and healthy party planning. Experience yummy family approved recipes to nourish your body and soul. Request the Dashing Dish Sampler with your best gift today. Call 888-665-4483 or simply scan the QR code to donate online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. Today on Cornerstone Connect, we welcome Dashing Dish host, Katie Farrell. In November begins the all new season and we are so excited. Katie and Oliver, Welcome to Cornerstone Connect. <laughs> Aw, thank you. We're so excited to be here with you guys today. Oh, he is absolutely adorable. We all love watching him. I'm like, we'll hear you, but I think we're all looking at that beautiful face. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> well, in the November newsletter, you were so transparent with your heart and in the loss you and your family went through. Can you walk through that journey with us? Yeah, you know, it's hard to believe, but it was last summer, so just a little bit over a year ago that we found out that we were pregnant with our second baby, and we were so excited. We prayed for over a year for that baby, and so when I found out, it was just the joy of my life to be able to tell Sean that we were expecting another little miracle, and unfortunately, just about nine weeks into the pregnancy, I went to go get an ultrasound done and I found out that the baby was way behind in growth. And I didn't really know what that meant at the time, um, but the doctor told us that out of his entire practice, he saw three babies that ended up catching up in growth and everything ended up being fine. But that was in his 30 year practice, three people. So we went home and he said, come back in a few days and we'll see how things are going. And um, just about a few days later, we went back and the doctor told us that unfortunately there was no heartbeat. And so in that moment, we had to face one of the greatest losses ever, which was the loss of our second child and uh, come to terms with the fact that we were going to be saying goodbye to this baby before we even got to meet them. And although that was one of the hardest moments, I looked at my husband in that office and I said, I don't know how, I don't know you know, in, in what timing, but I know that God will redeem this because that is who God is. And so what do you know, just a month and a half after my miscarriage, I found out I was pregnant again with little Oliver James, who was right, right here next to me. And God definitely did redeem everything that was lost through this precious gift. That is so amazing. Oh, we're looking at a picture of him. Oh, Oliver James, he's such a miracle. You know, if you could, because I feel like sometimes when we walk through grievous moments like that, you know, what did you, your husband, even your child, because it really, Maddie was really prophesying that pregnancy to you. And so what did you do to help your family uh, before the, you know, the restoration happened, walk through that season successfully. Yeah, you know, that's kind of the, the in-between part that I, I don't talk a lot about because I like to focus on the testimony, right? But that in-between time was definitely a journey. There was about six weeks where um, it was after the miscarriage where I had to uh, grieve that loss and also you know, talk about where we would place our trust um, in, in, in our hope in that time. And so Sean and I had to come together and we had to just make a decision that no matter what, that God was faithful and that his word was true. Regardless of what we saw, regardless of what we felt, we just needed to keep our eyes on the Lord and on his promises. And so that's what we did. We kept our eyes on the promises of God. And that was the thing that was our anchor that kept us yeah. in all of the emotions and all of the grieving and all of the wondering. 
Um, and that is, has been my firm foundation my entire life. You know, I just, I keep my eyes on Jesus. And um, there's a song that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. The things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And so I just turn my eyes upon Jesus every single day. And I say, God, I trust you, you know, and I would proclaim his promises over my life that God, you have plans to prosper and not harm me, to give me a hope and a future. And I just looked at his glory and his grace and I kept my focus on that. And that was what really carried me through. Um, you know, also the, the Holy Spirit is our comforter and even in the midst of my surgery um, for the miscarriage, I had such a supernatural peace come over me. And there's no way to explain it other than the Holy Spirit giving me his supernatural peace. And um, so whenever we're going through a hard time, the Holy Spirit wants to comfort us. He wants to be there for us. And all we have to do is say, help, help me, Holy Spirit give me your help, your comfort, teach me, guide me. And that's what his job is. And he will so faithfully come alongside you and be there with you in your hardest times. What a beautiful story of God's restoration in you and Sean's life. And just, you know, thinking about now you're a mother of two. Talk to us, what does this look like? <laughs> Well, <laughs> it is, it is busy and it's yeah. wonderful. You know, it's there, everything about being a mom is the greatest joy, the greatest gift to me, especially because becoming a mom wasn't easy for me. I will never take one moment for granted, the good and the hard. Um, but yeah, it, being a mom of two is, it keeps me busy, definitely on my toes. But I am thankful that I have a very supportive husband and I'm thankful that I get to work from home. And of course, Maddie's five years old. So that helps. She's like a little mama. So she's always looking and checking Oliver. You know, when I can't, I'll be doing the dishes and I say, hey, can you get in his rattle or whatever it is? And so she's right on top of that. So that is really nice to have a big sister that's helping me out. But it's such a gift and I couldn't be more joyful or happy. That is awesome. Well, I'm so excited. So we have this new season being launched because that beautiful baby was born during the time that you were supposed to be recording. So it got pressed back to November, but you're offering something special for our viewing audience. Do you want to talk about this dashing dish sampler uh, for season four recipes? Yes. So I feel that um, the recipes that I get to share throughout the season are of course so exciting to share, but I wanted to provide some actual tangible recipes in case it's hard to jot all the recipes down or go look for them on the website that you can try out even if you're not able to watch the entire show or you're not able to grab the recipe from the show, let's say, so that you can try out some of the recipes from Dashing Dish because I guarantee you, even if you're not, you don't consider yourself a healthy eater or you're maybe a little bit more on the picky side or maybe your family members are, that these recipes are so simple and they're so delicious that you might just get hooked on some healthy recipes if you try them out. So that's my hope is that by sharing them with you guys, you can actually go and make them in your kitchen as soon as you receive that newsletter and try them out for yourself and see if you can't just fool your picky eaters or even yourself and um, realize that healthy eating isn't isn't bad and that it can actually taste really delicious. That's right. I know our family absolutely loves your recipes, especially your Instapot recipes, which in this month's uh, newsletter, you have a sweet potato. Y'all need to have some sweet potatoes by your Instapot for Thanksgiving. But you know, we want to make sure that you get your sampler. So for your best gift, anyone can send into Cornerstone and request this wonderful sampler with recipes in it and they're good for you. Katie, thank you so much for being with us. I just want to remind you too that Dashing Dish is on every Tuesday at 2 p.m. and 9 p.m. and Saturdays at 11 a.m. on Cornerstone Network. Thank you for your time today. Oliver, you did wonderful. <laughs> yes, he's 
He's wanting to get his word in on this interview. He's like, wait a minute. I'm not going to let my mom do all the talking. <laughs> That's right. He is the so. miracle right there, folks. You're looking at the restoring power of God. That's well, we right. love you so much. Thank you, Katie, for being with us today. On Thank Corner you, Amanda. Corner. We love you guys. You. Stay tuned for more of Cornerstone Connect. For me personally, I remember from the very beginning of just hearing this idea of Cornerstone, of there being this Christian, this faith-based uh, uh, television station. And I was one of those ones um, that was uh, early in the morning, I had my little television and I was waiting for it to come on and there was a little delay, but I was there waiting to see it finally come on. Um, my parents were connected to, to Russ and Norma back then and, and we used to come out very often and so, so for me personally, it's been part of my spiritual journey and legacy in Pittsburgh. And now that I get to be the executive director of Light of Life, knowing that that partnership is even stronger today than before brings me great joy. Today on Cornerstone Connect, we welcome Pastor Gary Mitrick, chairman of the board at CTVN and host of Move Your Mountain. Now, Pastor Gary, you wrote an article uh, about gratefulness and the benefits of a grateful heart. And this is something that you would think as being Christians for a long time that we would just know this, but we always need a reminder. I, you know, I heard once, Tom, that, that gratitude is one of the healthiest emotions we could ever exemplify. I think it keeps us positive, keeps us focusing on God and on the right things. I'm reminded of that story in the Bible of the 10 lepers. Yeah. And I share this in this message that, you know, 10 lepers were healed as they went. It says they were healed, but only one came back. And I always am, am amazed at the Lord's response. He was like shocked. Yeah. He goes, were there not 10? Where are the other nine? And I think God's expecting us to be grateful and not take his blessings for granted. Isn't it interesting? You know, I, I've heard of people being healed in meetings or in some outreach or something. And then they're like, oh, well, this is good. And then they just keep on going on with their life. And you would, and this story that Jesus tells is exemplified of that, that we think, oh, if someone was healed, well, they'd naturally get saved. But a lot of times they don't. They just they are happy they're healed, but they don't come back with that thankfulness. And I, and I know this is the month we're going to be celebrating yeah. Thanksgiving and thank God for one day <laughs> that we pause as a nation to give God thanks. But I think every day ought to be Thanksgiving for the believer. Absolutely. In fact, uh, you, you bring up three points in here. So I've got them here that there are three benefits. The healthy person is grateful. A habit of gratitude causes us to not to take things for granted. Right. That's a big one. And when we're grateful, we reflect on the Lord's presence and involvement in our lives. Can you just tell us a little bit more about reflecting on God's uh, presence in our life when we're grateful? Well, the Bible says the Lord is good. And He's good all the time. And I think sometimes people struggle with the Lord when, when things in their life aren't going right, when maybe they're dealing with affliction or infirmity or tribulation, you know, I hope we don't blame God because yeah. he's not the author of any of that. But we, we, we need to just be, I like to say, be intentional about focusing. The Bible says the goodness of the Lord leads a man to repentance. Right. Think about his goodness today. Think about no matter what's going wrong in your life, think about the blessings, the, the things that remind you of God's goodness and don't take them for granted. Boy, I mean, you've said a mouthful there because I think we're kind of wired up negative sometimes, aren't we? We can get real down like, oh man, why is all Lord, why, why, why me, Lord, why me? Really? What well, did I ever do? <laughs> sing it, um, you know, but uh, it's interesting because that song, he's actually thanking the Lord for his salvation. <laughs> I've heard people say it the other way though, a lot. Um, let, let's talk about, um, you challenge us in the article to thank the Lord. We've got two hands. So we thank the Lord for five people in our life. And I, I think this is, a, this is an exercise I can do right now. You can do it at home too. 
think of five people. I mean, I can think of my wife, my three kids, I have three grandkids. I'm, I'm already up to eight right yeah, there. But that's you're a, grateful for. Yeah. What, what a, you're grateful what a for. Exercise. And take five things that you are thankful for that the Lord has done for you. And don't go back to 1972, <laughs> you know, <laughs> go back to the, in this last year, go back. Hey, he kept me through the pandemic. He's provided for me during the inflation. He's kept me healthy. You know, there's so many things we, we are so grateful for. The Bible says he daily loads us with benefits. Boy, uh, again, uh, uh, if we read, you know, look, we're all going to go through those difficult times. You read the Psalms. David was down in the dumps sometimes. Right. Um, but always with an attitude. Well, I think sometimes he complained to the Lord too, didn't he? He's like, how long, O oh Lord, right? But always getting around to, I know that I shall praise him again in the land of the living. And he talked to his soul. He said, soul, bless the Lord. You know, and sometimes we, 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 we have to refute the negative that tries to fill our minds. Paul said in Philippians, finally, my brethren, think on these things. What's good, what's lovely, what's praiseworthy, what's of a good report. You know, that just eliminated about 90% of most of our <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> and, and you know, it's, it's interesting because um, again, we can focus on those things that are negative so easily, but for the Christian, always, God, no matter what we're going through, God has got a plan and a purpose and a future and a hope always so we can always come down on the thankfulness he side. Does. And I would challenge all of us, and I'm talking to me, let Thanksgiving not just be about food and football. Let it be about family. Let it be about the goodness and the gratefulness you have for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a good, good father. Absolutely. Pastor Gary, thank you so much for being with us today. We've watched Cornerstone since, since day one. I was married and um, my greatest desire was to have a baby. And um, after being married and trying for 10 years, we continued to try and nothing happened. So I went to the doctor and he said that there probably wasn't any way that I would have a baby because I had severe endometriosis. After 10 years, uh, I w we went to a service at Greater Works and um, I was just ready to give, give up. And I was just very tired and Mahesh Chavda was there, he's a faith healer. And he was starting to speak and in the middle of what he was saying, he said, there's a woman here with severe endometriosis who's been trying for baby for 10 years. I fit every criteria. So I got up out of, of my seat and ran down to the front. I don't think I ever hit the floor running down. I was just beside myself because I couldn't believe it. And I was slain in the spirit and I could just feel God working on my insides. So three months later, I was told that I was pregnant with my son. My son was born eight months later, and he's truly a joy to me. And um, he, his love for music was way beyond anything I could believe or even think of what a son would be like. So he's been playing uh, the keyboard and music since he's two years old. And he loves the Lord as well, and we've just come through a lot together. My son was three years old and I wanted him to meet Mahesh, Mahesh meet him. And um, he did here at the studio and um, Mahesh was, you know, very kind to him and saw the miracle that happened. Also, my family came with me, which we all do things together. And um, at the time they had a uh, service for healing service and uh, she walked in with a cane and she had fibromyalgia pretty bad and when we the service was over she after being prayed for she was healed of fibromyalgia and walked out without her cane and I had been suffering from fibromyalgia where I didn't sleep and I couldn't roll around in my bed or sleep on my back or my side or my stomach or anything and I came and I was slain in the spirit by him and prayed over. 
and I didn't recognize it or realize it till a while later when I was home and was able to have a good night's sleep and was able, I wasn't even able to ride in a car. It was so painful. And I did go to meetings and I did go to the hospital. They had a meeting and I seen people with neck braces on and in wheelchairs and there's no cure for it. But when I was prayed for, I was slain in the spirit and I was healed. God is a big God and his miracles are big if we only allow him. We try to take things over and do it ourselves. But if we let God do it, it's just so amazing. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed our November edition of Cornerstone Connect. I am so encouraged, you know, thinking about Katie's story and how her and Sean stood on the promises of God, even when you weren't getting what you desired. I, I, that just speaks volumes to all of us that no matter what we're walking through, look into the face of Jesus and stand on his word. He is a sure foundation. And I just wanna thank each and every one of you that partner with our network because you are giving us the opportunity to remind people of that very important task that we all need to be doing every day, looking into the face of Jesus. And our network is declaring the word of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that someone could tune in and hear that good news news. And then Pastor Gary's article about gratefulness, you know, this is the month of November and we celebrate Thanksgiving and, and we need to take time to thank God and have grateful hearts for everything that he is doing and for what he has to come. We can be thankful for the future knowing that God has good plans for each and every one of us. And I just want to remind you that on Thanksgiving Day, we have an amazing special where we're bringing our local music artists together and they're going to worship unto God. You know, when we come together, there is something beautiful that God does in our midst. And it says, when two or three come, he's there, he's present. So make sure you tune in on Thanksgiving Day to be with your Cornerstone family as we worship God because he is worthy to be praised. You know, I just want to thank you so much once again for your time that you give, your efforts here as prayer partners or in any way that God has used you, your prayers for the work here at Cornerstone and definitely your giving. We could not do what we do apart from those financial donations. And we just want you to know in this season of gratitude that we are so thankful for your life. Just know we could not do what we do apart from you. And we love you. We know that God loves you and he has a purpose and a plan. So be grateful today. Mm -hmm.